Come on, Ducky. Come here. Come here. Come here, Ducky. Come on. Come on, Ducky. Let's go this way. I didn't learn to garden until I got to college and did an internship at a farm, you know, doing any farming or gardening, growing any food. You know, I didn't know about anything about growing food until I got to college. And I think when I started living here, some of what I started to do on the land was um, a little more intentionally focused on, on solving, you know, global problems, you know, dealing, using less energy, like basically doing less damage. You know, I wanted to contribute less to climate change and war and pollution and toxicity. So a, a direct way to do that is to use less stuff. Living on a piece of land and starting to grow food, especially gardening, which was a way to use, you know, to do less bad in the beginning, use less, you know, buy food from closer, have your own food instead of buying it from far away, less pollution, less damage, started to actually become something that I enjoyed so much that in some ways now I care less that it's part of the solution to like global problems then it's just really empowering. It's so enjoyable to do these things that I don't even need that as a reason to garden, to be self-reliant, to provide my own fuel wood for heat. It heats the whole building and we cook on it and dry on it and bake in it. So it does all of these basic uses and it's just a wood cook stove. But it's not like the, you know, your grandparents' old wood cook stove, which is all ornate and has a lot of air flowing through it. It doesn't really heat well. It's like a high performance wood cook stove. Okay. It's airtight, like a normal good wood stove. It heats all of our hot water. So we actually have to take a bath in the winter or definitely take a shower or we'll end up with too much hot. It makes more hot water than we need. It, it's free hot, it's free hot water because we're, we're running the wood stove anyways to keep the building warm. It's just a little, piece of sta a stainless steel tank in the wood firebox where you put the wood where there's fire. There's a tank that holds a couple gallons of water and that's connected to a hot water tank. And so the water flows via convection. You don't need a pump. Flows in the cool water, comes in down low and it heats up and the hot water leaves the top side and it just cycles through the 40 gallon tank. Making the champagne kind of woody debris compost mound is, is not that difficult. You just make, basically you have to make a large pile of, of mostly wood chips and get polyethylene tubing, water piping, through the pile. We used three quarter inch poly tubing and ran 800 feet. So it's, it's at one, over 110. It's about 30 degrees outside, so it's, you know, 80 degrees hotter in here than it is outside. Then you put, we put 400 feet of tubing in our greenhouse and we put a pump on that line of tubing, connected it all. And so when you pump it, the water comes out of the compost pile at about 120 to 145 degrees and goes through the greenhouse, giving up its heat into the soil and put it in the beds, grow plants in that soil. When the water comes back out of the bed, it's um, lost about 40, 50 degrees, so it comes back out at about 80 degrees. There's a lot of tubing. Giving all that heat into the soil. We're able to make the climate in the greenhouse be um, much warmer, which is especially helpful in the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. So when we're starting the garden around now in February and March, and then extend the gardening season all the way into November and December. The neat thing is we're making the compost anyways. So we want to make large piles of wood chips to compost into soil and mulch for all of our fruit trees and berries anyway and garden paths. So, but it's making all this heat no matter whether we use the heat or not. We haven't had a greenhouse to try to grow these in. And now that we have a greenhouse, we just figured let's try see if they'll produce inside the greenhouse in the winter. If they'll break dormancy. They won't be too cold in here. And we're getting a pretty decent flush of shiitakes just in, in the greenhouse, we've been picking them for dinner. Most of what we do here is homesteading more than farming, you know, making our own stuff for our own consumption, our own sustenance, rather than selling products to, to make a living. I mostly make a living doing design work. So, but the property's 10 acres, faces west, and it's a beat up old hill farm. So it was, it's been abused for a couple hundred years, the way the sheep and other animals used to be grazed on, in this part of the state. So we're trying to really turn a place that was not growing any food for people for the most part to uh, you know, an abundance of 
fruits, nuts, vegetables, meats. This is our summer harvest. It stores for the whole year. These are one of a, a handful of pots of uh, potatoes we store in sawdust. So we have a year's worth of potatoes that we can put up in the root cellar. In the last two years, most of my calories have, have started to come from this property. And I'm not trying to grow all my own food. I'm just trying to have a high level of, of self-reliance and health and independence. Really and hard. Economy. Super if I grew all my own food, I wouldn't have any reason to trade, you know, dinner. with other friends and, and neighbors um, for maple syrup or dandelion wine or mead or, oh, you know, too. whatever the different things are, uh, pickles that other people make better than we do, or we don't have the time or the resources Apples to make, like maple out. syrup. Storm sawdust, and these are they keep so well if you storm and sawdust. The stuff we got from the store now is either totally mealy or from New Zealand. It took, whatever, 8,000 miles away. This is what happens when you garden is you carry food around all the time when you don't expect to. It doesn't seem like something I'm too, I, I was too familiar with before gardening of having, you know, abundance of some, so much of something you just want to give it away. Like gardening makes us want to give things away more than anything else I had done in my life before. So that seemed, for that reason alone, it seemed like this must be a good thing to do. We grow a lot of different varieties of vegetables. There's more vegetable varieties you can grow in a cold climate than you can in the tropics. Something that surprised me when I went and visited a friend in Nicaragua, they can barely grow most vegetables, it's too hot. And the day's actually not long enough. Our summers are very, very long days. So we can grow, he had no very little vegetable diversity. He had a hundred types of fruits. We can't grow nearly the fruit um, or a lot of other things, but we can grow a massive amount of vegetable. Our vegetable gardens in the northern climates are, are spectacular for a good reason. Everything we're planting and everything we're in, implementing here is designed with the idea that the climate could shift colder and shift or shift warmer. And so we like plants that are going to be happy whether it gets warmer or colder. And we plant, if we plant plants that on all ends, you know, zone six plants to zone three and two plants. So plants that do well in like New Jersey to plants that would do well in Northern Canada. And we plant them all here to stock the system to be adaptable. The place around me that I walk through and walk out into means more to me than if I wasn't engaging with it. So, um, you know, before I moved here, I wasn't, gain, I wasn't working with the land around me in any way to get a yield, to get food or anything from the land. And now doing that here, you have to start paying attention more when you do that. So you start noticing more. The place around you starts to mean more to you. You might get values from it that you thought you wanted to get out, like save money doing something, but then you start to get other values you never expected that are a little less measurable sometimes. So that's what I see happen to people when they start to take steps to engage in the world around them and empower themselves and solve problems around them. You know, and this is a big part of what, what permaculture is, is I started to realize by gardening and living on this land this that I could not only do less bad I'm really glad by living on land and homesteading a bit, so this tree, this apple but I could also actually well. do good. Not just less bad, not just throw away less or use less resources, but I could start to produce resources, like increase the fertility of the soil and make more habitat for more animals. So actually like do good things, have a positive benefit, not just have less of a negative impact. And now to me, the idea of impact, like reduce your impact, which I used to be all about. I want to reduce my impact. Now I want to increase my impact as much as possible. I want as positive of an impact as I can in my lifetime.